Hey guys, today I want to talk a little bit about the cervical hinge once again. I had a client today who had a quite severe cervical hinge. Uh, there was starting to develop a little hump there between the, the C7 and the T1, you know, that, uh, that <laughs> buffalo hump that they call it, the drawers hump, I guess it's also called. And uh, she had a lot of pain, right, migraines and so on. And the thing here is that sometimes these clients, they get really good at cheating, right? So I told her to be long in the neck and pull the chin down and it looked pretty good. But sometimes it's not enough that it looks pretty good, it has to also feel good, right? So I ran my fingers down the spinous processes and I could feel a great indent, like a divot, at the, at the C7. So between the C6 spinous process down onto this, uh, the T1, I could feel a divot into the, the C7 spinous process. And of course this is also where the hump was lo located, right? So, so uh, we can, uh, it's safe to assume that the deep neck flexors of that region is not firing properly. So once again I had to take the neck and really pull it up. I, I put my hand here and I pull it towards the roof and I repalpate. And of course this time it was perfect, right? But it was really difficult for the client to maintain that position. So what do, do we do? Well, hard work, guys. Right? You have to really work hard. You have to pull that back of the head up to the roof put the chin down and strengthen the deep neck flexors and work really hard on it. Don't let your clients allow themselves to, to excuse themselves because they're not going to get results. They have to get out of the cervical hinge. Okay, this is really important. I hope uh, that you learned something from this. Once again, run your fingers down the spinous processes and feel for an indent. There should not be an indent there. It should be a relatively easy, easily palpated spinous processes on the way down. Okay, have a nice day.